effort into uh, learning songs and practicing and going on tour. So it's always, at least from my vantage point, it's fun to watch other churches do the same thing. So we uh, are thankful for the eternal praise choir that's here this evening. Uh, the order of the services, uh, I will in a minute here uh, lead with a word of prayer and just a few announcements. We will have a offering at the intermission. I think there's some expense, uh, some projects that they as a group want to, uh, are looking forward to doing. So that's what that is going to go to. There is also a uh, CD rack in the back there that from their previous years, I don't think they have one for this year yet. If I'm correct, I think they will be doing some recording this week and then going on tour after that. I'm not sure if I have that exactly right or not, but something like that. So as I think of an evening like this, my mind almost always goes to um, the children of Israel there in Exodus 14, right in the end of Exodus 14 and the beginning of chapter 15 there. When the children of Israel saw what God did, how that he delivered them out of the hands of the Egyptians there, um, the story is not so pretty for the Egyptians as it is for the Israelites because they were drowned in the sea there. But when the children of Israel seen the deliverance that God did for them, uh, they sang a song as they got to the other side and they realized their freedom. They realized what God had done for them. And as we sing and as I hear youth sing, I think of that a lot because we sing because I hope it's what we realize what God did for us, how he set us free from, delivered us from our sins, our past, uh, those who are out to destroy us, those who uh, would like to destroy us. So that's my encouragement that we consider as we sing, uh, as we hear them sing tonight, that we're thankful to God for what he has done for us. So with that, let's just bow our head for a word of prayer and uh, then we will let them. Father, this evening we are thankful to you for the privilege to be together in this way. We thank you that uh, in the midst of daylight, we're not afraid to gather together to worship you and to praise you. So we thank you for the freedom that we have in this land. We thank you so much, Lord, for what you've done for us in our lives. Um, and as we think about that, allow it to help us to every day thank you and praise you with our lives and with all that we do. So, Lord, may your spirit be here this evening. Let your blessings be upon it. May you uh, just receive the glory and the honor and the praise. We commit this service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Blessed be your name, your glorious name. May it be exalted over all names. Blessed be your name, your glorious name. May it be exalted over all names. You alone are Lord and you made the heavens, all of the heavens and the starry host. You made the earth and all that is on it. You made the seas from coast to coast. You give life to all of the living and the multitudes in heaven worship you. Blessed be your name, your glorious name. May it be exalted over all names. Blessed be your name, your glorious name. May it be exalted over all names. You're a mighty God and your deeds are awesome. Through all our problems, your love endures. Nothing can happen that your eye does not see it. All of the glory and power is yours. Let us all remember your warnings and give us strength to obey your word. Blessed be your name, your glorious name. May it be exalted over all names. Blessed be your name, your glorious name. May it be exalted over all names. Blessed be your name, your glorious name. May it be exalted over all names. Blessed be your name, your glorious name. May it be exalted over all names. house well filled. Um, it is an honor to be here. We, our desire is to lead you in worship and to encourage you in your Christian walk. My name is J. Paul Weaver and I serve as a ministerial advisor to the, the corral here. We have a group of young people. It's um, a youth group composed mostly of three churches. Um, Blue Ball Mennonite, Calvary Mennonite, and Open Door Mennonite, and there's a, a few uh, uh, others from other churches as well, but we're glad to be here with you. You know, I had to think about God's love to us, that perfect love that God shows to us through his son Jesus, and how that changes our lives. I'm going to read a, a few verses out of 1 John. I think about God's perfect love. 1 John 4, verse 9. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. 
Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we know, we have known and believed that the love that God hath to us, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because we, he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So a few things here. You know, God loved us, and that he sent Jesus into this, this world so we could take care of our sin problem. Uh, and, and also he talks about sending his spirit. But in verse 12 it says, if we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. We know that relationships are hard, but we know that God desires that each one of us love our fellow men. And when we show that love to our fellow men and have that love, it is that Christ's love, God's love to us is perfected in our relationships. It's not just about the relationships with the Father and the Son. It's the relationships we have here on this earth as well. If we love our fellow men, that love is perfected. And also, here in, is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. That love that we experience that is perfected in us it casts out fear like it talks about there. There's no fear in love. If we have that perfect love, we have no fear. We don't fear the things in life that the world fears because we can trust in the Father. If we have that true relationship with the Father, that perfect love, we can totally trust in him. That doesn't mean we won't have difficulties in life. That doesn't mean that God will not allow tests to come but we can trust in him that he wants the best for us. And we do know what the best is. The best is heaven. And that's something we can all look forward to. That perfect love in our hearts is manifested in our relationships with our fellow men. And it casts out the fear that the world has. And that we, do, we need not fear at all because we know that if we're faithful, we have that promise of heaven and we will be there someday with Christ and the Father. Something we can all look forward to. I hope and pray that each one of you is experiencing that perfect love. That you're experiencing good relationships with your fellow men because of Christ in your hearts through, and work, his spirit working in our lives. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, for your gift of salvation, for your love, that perfect love that you extend to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that Christ was willing to come down onto this earth for each one of us. You love everyone here on this earth, and you desire a relationship with each one of us, and we thank you, Father, for that gift of salvation. We thank you for the promise of heaven that you promise to those that are faithful till the end. We thank you that we can live our lives without fear, that we can trust in you, that you desire the best for each one of us. Help us to love our fellow men and to fulfill that perfect love that you have for us by showing that love to each person that we have a relationship with. We just pray that you'd help us to be faithful in what you have called us to here on this earth. And Father, I just pray a special blessing to each person here tonight. May we all honor and glorify you in everything that we say and do. Father, bless our service tonight. May we be encouraged to continue on to being faithful in serving you. We pray you'd be with the corral here as they continue leading us in worship. And be with the director as well. We commit this to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for coming and continue a worship with us.
Okay, we were supposed to use this one. You just didn't get that memo. Um, it's a blessing and an honor for us to be here. Um, Weavertown, y'all have a musical heritage that goes before you with the youth choir and um, lots of fine singers at your church. So it's a blessing for us to be here. And it's also a blessing since y'all are apparently the second largest beachy congregation like in the whole world. What's the, what's the one in Georgia that's bigger than y'all? Montezuma. So, I mean, that's a long way away. And so, um, and you know, it's just great to be in a beachy building. I noticed that you don't have a wall like a Mennonite church would between this area and the whatever foyer area out there. So good for y'all. Um, doctrinally, my only issue with what you've done is you don't have the little beachy Amish um, fellowship Melita lights that like have a shelf and then they shine up on the ceiling <laughs> around the edge. You know what I'm talking about? You have to have that. And so, um, so that is a little disappointing. And you do have the painted post downstairs too. So um, it's almost just right. I just missed the little fellowship things over there on the side. So, But it is a blessing to be with y'all. I'd just like to talk about some of the songs that we have to sing for you. My name is Jeff Swanson, and again, we're the Eternal Praise Chorale. And <clears throat> we are going to sing a song with you, Thou True Vine That Heals. We, I think a few of our churches would sing from the um, Purple Martin hymnal that y'all have here as well. And I like to use a few of those songs a year. I think Great hymn singing is a wonderful thing, and it should be part of our choral music. People have these silly discussions about how we have choral music and then we have hymns. And um, I try to explain that hymns are just shortened choral music. I think it's all the same. And so I love to, to see the choirs do these things. And Thou True Vine would be from that hymnal. And after that, we're going to sing a song with y'all. And that will be uh, our pleasure as well to get to sing a song with y'all on Lift Your Glad Voices. In Non Nobis Domine, this might be the most profound text of uh, everything we have tonight. This is not unto us, O Lord, but to thine all the glory be. And that's pretty much the whole text in the song. It's in Latin, so um, I hope that y'all can enjoy it. I think it's a favorite of the choirs to sing. It is a driving piece, so um, if you could give us grace for a song that's in Latin. After that, we will have ladies' music for y'all, and then we will take a break. And after the break, we have an ensemble. And I don't know if y'all do that with the Weavertown Youth Choir, Youth Chorus, but um, that's a group of about 16 people or something, and they wanted to put a little extra time and do a little bit harder music, and it's um, very choral. And so I, I hope y'all enjoy that. So thanks again for having us. I look forward to seeing my music friends that are here after we sing. God bless you. And all my friends in art music as well. <laughs> Building walls, sorry. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, we have a children's song to sing for y'all, for all of you children, which is all of us, right? Answer's right. And so we'd like y'all to participate in this as well. And so it's building up the temple, which you know. And um, it's written or actually arranged by Mennonite composer Lyle Stutzman. And he makes it great. Do y'all know this one? Have you heard it? Maybe you have. Anyways, so you're going to have to do the hand motions with us. So I'm going to put the mic down for a moment. And so right hand first, go like that, right hand. Have to do right hand. All right, so it's building up the temple, right? And then up the Lord. And so in our church, <coughs> guys over there, so brothers, won't you help us? Go like that, point that way. Oh, disobeying you. <laughs> brothers, won't you help us? Sisters, won't you help us? Right hand, building up the temple of the Lord. Got it? Okay, and you have to sing on this. So there's a... <coughs> pretty long you probably couldn't hear me so brothers sisters right hand first and there's a pretty long introduction which is really sweet i hope you like it and so everybody has to sing with us and the rhythm he changed just a little bit but i think it'll be just fine
please, and turn to number 594. 594. I know you'd like to stand, but uh, please wait for the second call and then we'll stand. <coughs> Thank you. 
All right, hi again. Just like to give some explanations of the rest of the songs on the program. And um, I would like to say, um, I do bleed a, a little bit of beachy blood, my wife and I and our children. We lived in Lot, Texas for four years and um, we were part of the church and taught there. So I can tease you about the beachy Amish light thing anyways. So uh, just for a connection there. We're gonna start with the Song of Moses. And the Song of Moses has uh, intrigued me for a long time because we have a Song of Moses in Deuteronomy. Where is it, Exodus? Well, it's in the Old Testament. And then there's a song of Moses in Revelation, and the words are very different. And so I've often thought it was interesting that it's a song of Moses, and it's two, in two different places. So here is an interpretation thereof. Um, I have a, like a going list of pieces that I think that um, Mennonite um, students and youth should get to sing at least once in their career. And one of those pieces is Hark I Hear the Harps Eternal. So um, they're getting to sing that for y'all tonight, and I hope it's a blessing. Road Together to the Kingdom, as far as I'm concerned, is an SMBI piece. That's the first time I ever heard it, 2008 CD they have, and so I hope y'all enjoy that. Um, if you're younger or not, make sure you listen and row together to the sound of the waves splashing against the boats. You got to hear that part. And do not be afraid. It's probably rhetorical to say it to this congregation, but um, there is a Mennonite music world out there, Mennonite music scene, and this piece has gone through the Mennonite music scene over the last few years, and so it's another piece that probably maybe we should all have to learn, and so it's a gorgeous piece with a text from Isaiah, and we're going to end with This World Is Not My Home. You know that piece, and I, I hope you enjoy that. And then our benediction, musically for y'all, is Someday a Bright New World. Even though we all sing songs that are three and 400 years old in our hymnals, this would be what people call an, an old song because it's from 1970. How that's older than a hymn from the 1600s, I don't know. But that's what we call them. So I think some of you will remember this song. It's a gospel song. I believe it is um, right at 1970 because that would be my birth year. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. You're a good audience. I can see you smiling. Your participation in the uh, building up the temple was a little sparse at times. <laughs> but I can see you smiling <clears throat> um, at the singers. And sometimes we wonder, have I said something wrong or what happened that people are just staring at us with no emotion? So I appreciate the involvement there.
can hear the heart's eternal ringing on the farther shore. As I near those swollen waters with their deep and solemn roar, Everybody get a place, everybody get an oar. Roll together to the kingdom. We're rolling this boat in a kingdom rail. Roll together to the kingdom. Now listen to the captain, shout the pair. Roll together to the kingdom. Come on and row, row, row together to the kingdom. Row, row, row together to the kingdom. Come on aboard. Everybody get aboard. Everybody's got to pull back, row to the kingdom shore. Everybody come aboard. Everybody get an oar. Everybody's got to pull back, got to row, row to the kingdom shore. To the kingdom shore. Everybody's got to row, row, row together, got to row. When the river is wide and the water is rough, row together to the kingdom. When the body is tired and we want to give up, row together to the kingdom. When the waves are high and the current is strong, row together to the kingdom. We gotta shout to each other to spur us on, row together to the kingdom. We gotta row, 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 row together to the kingdom. We gotta row, 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 row together to the kingdom. Come on, come on, Everybody get it, roar. Everybody's got a pull back. Row to the kingdom shore. Everybody come aboard. Everybody get an oar. Everybody's got to pull back. Got to row, row to the kingdom shore. To the kingdom shore. Everybody's got to row, row, row together. Got to row. Now the current is strong and the wind's out of shape. Row together to the kingdom. But a boat is started by the power of grace. Row together to the kingdom. When the days get hard and the journey is long, row together to the kingdom. Hear the saints of heaven cheering us on. Row together to the kingdom. We gotta row, 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 row together to the kingdom. We gotta, gotta row, oh brother, row, oh sister, row, row together to the kingdom. We gotta, gotta row, oh children, row, come on now, row, row together to the kingdom. We gotta, gotta row, row together to the kingdom. We gotta, gotta row together to the kingdom.
Well, thanks to you all. Uh, I feel privileged that uh, we as a church here at Weavertown were on your list. So thank you for that. Uh, and I think I can speak for the rest of the church. I'm sure we enjoyed it. At least I did. And I know speaking to some of the youth as uh, thanks to uh, Jeff for recognizing our rich heritage of singing here, which I, I do think we do have, and praise God for that. And just speaking to some of the youth who were helping me lift the offering, they were impressed. And those were some of the ones who have taken part in some of our tours and singing. So good job. Thanks to you all. As I was sitting there reflecting, uh, it, it just crossed my mind. I wonder how many hours you all just put into studying, memorizing, and uh, preparing for this. And I say that um, somewhat as a um, encouragement to you and a uh, testimony. Um, as I reflected, I always enjoyed good singing. Even as a young person, I enjoyed good Christian music. But uh, I did not lead my life in a good, godly way. So I never had, I never was able to take the privilege to do what you all have done and, and do. And as, it, as I became a Christian, it, uh, it really spited me. I have many years that I wish I would have invested in something like this. So that's an encouragement for you. Um, and as I was thinking about the time that you do spend in memorizing, and as I noticed that uh, you didn't have any notebooks or anything, so you had it inside. Uh, the music that I listen to has, for the most part, left me, except when I pump gas and walk into stores. Then it comes back. So that's been many, many years ago, and that still comes back. And I'm sure we recognize that as the uh, kind of the law of sowing and reaping. Uh, but God is good. But on the good side of that, on the positive side, I'm sure that what you have done is going to be a blessing to you for many, many years. So God bless you for that and continue to do that and never take granted for granted what the privilege that you do have. So thank you for that. Uh, there is a uh, snack or a meal provided downstairs for you all and for the youth that are here, our youth, visiting youth, uh, you're all welcome to join in that and to uh, fellowship down there for a while. So we want to thank the Lord for the blessings that he's provided. And uh, I'm sure you come from godly parents. So I don't have to remind you, but I will anyhow. Thank the cooks for the work that they put into preparing the food for them when you get down there. So, uh, yeah, I think with that, I will ask you to stand for a closing prayer. And after that, you will be able to consider yourself dismissed. So let's pray. Father, we thank you this evening for, again, the blessings, the privilege. We thank you for songs. We thank you for singing. We thank you for testimonies of new lives. We thank you for the hope in songs that we sing of, brighter tomorrows. So, Lord, as we go from here, help us, encourage us, lift us up by your spirit to uh, commit our lives more fully to you and to walk closer to you. Lord, I do pray that uh, as I think these youth have plans for some recording and also for tour, I pray that uh, you would bless them with health in the next few days as they prepare for that. For those who are going, bless them with uh, good health. And Lord, as they go on their journey for their tour, pray for safety. Pray that uh, you would watch over them as they travel and uh, just allow your spirit to be in their midst. And as we journey individually on our lives, as we go from here this evening, just be with us. And uh, just, again, help us, each every one of us, to commit our lives more fully to you 
and that you would receive glory and honor and praise for all that you do for us and have done. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.